Singer-songwriter Billy Joel, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, multi-Grammy and American Music Award winner, probably best known for songs like Uptown Girl and Piano Man, sang these lines to another hit song called My Life back in 1978. I don't care what you say anymore, this is my life. Go ahead with your own life and leave me alone. It tells the story of an old friend, they used to be real close, who got tired of the monotonous routine of his life, so he closed the shop, sold the house, and bought a ticket to the West Coast. And then he did a stand-up routine in LA. Well, you at least have to give a guy credit for having the courage to march to the beat of a different drummer. Bucking the conventional standard can be a smart move, but not when it means living out your life centered on yourself and shutting others out. That's not a dream worth following. Now, I know that the principle of outliving your life is not gender specific, but I want to apply it man to man for a moment. I don't know all there is about being a man, but I have lived long enough to understand a few things. For instance, a lot of men operate with a flawed plan for success and satisfaction. Go to school, get a good education, get a good job, work hard at your job and hope it'll turn into a good career. Along the way, find a good wife, have some kids and raise a good family. And if everything goes according to plan, well, you'll have a good retirement that will allow you to live out your life in reasonable comfort. This has been the conventional plan for manhood. And it's all good, right? <laughs> oh yeah, and then you die. The payoff at the end feels less than satisfying. Along the way, a lot of guys feel restless and bored, suspecting that the process is flawed but they just keep their heads down and hope for the best. Underneath the surface, you can feel it. It's like this low-grade fever. You're not sick enough to stay in bed, but you're not well enough to really enjoy life either. There's a common mantra among business gurus that says, your system is perfectly designed to give you the results you're getting. That's also true about life. If your system is only producing a, a nice collection of stuff and accomplishments with no eternal significance, then your success and satisfaction is only temporary. If you want something that's lasting and more meaningful, then you need a new system. The truth is we are designed for more. An advertising campaign for Audi used the tagline, Truth in Engineering. Man, that's a powerful statement, and it's just talking about metal and rubber. <laughs> well, the truth in the way humanity is engineered, you know, the way we're designed by our Creator, is that we are built to live for something greater than ourselves. We're wired to outlive our life. Now, I get it, outliving your life might sound too epic and unattainable, but a few minor adjustments can make all the difference. It's like this, let's say you board a ship in San Diego on your way to Honolulu. If the navigation coordinates are just a few degrees off, well, you could miss Honolulu and wind up in Tokyo. A slight course correction in whatever season of life you're in can change your trajectory and guide you to a more fulfilling destination. So I want to give you three course correcting adjustments. Number one, discover a transcendent cause. What are you living for that's bigger than yourself? Having a transcendent cause means that you leave more than 
just a carbon footprint. It's the opposite of marking time or even making a living. It's unconventional. A transcendent cause is really a paradox because living for something greater than yourself is really one of the greatest things you can do for yourself. There's this deep and fulfilling collateral benefit to yourself. And teaching our children to be others-centered and outward focus is one of the biggest things that we can do to outlive our life. It has this huge return on our investment. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Number two, leverage your influence. And leverage your influence now. Some people on the front end of their careers or those who feel stuck in the middle give in to the idea that they don't really have an influence yet. Now, it's true, while the fall and winter of our life are typically the seasons of our greatest influence, anyone in any season of life needs to realize the potential to impact others where they are right now. John Maxwell exposes the myths of leading from the middle in his book, the 360 degree leader, developing your influence from anywhere in the organization. Maxwell says that some people believe leadership comes simply from having a position or a title. So they wait, thinking, when I get to the top, then I'll learn to lead. They believe that they can't really make a difference unless they're on the top. But the truth in our engineering is that most things are accomplished because of relationships and reputation, not because of position. According to Jesus, the one who is truly great is the one who serves others. So if we wanna be first, we must put others first. Look around at the relationships and responsibilities you've already been given. Outliving your life by serving and influencing others starts right now. And number three, invest for eternity. Someone who invests eternally not only wants to make a difference now, but they also see into the future. They understand the laws of the harvest. The first law is we reap what we sow. The second is we reap more than we sow. And the third is we reap in a different season than we sow. You see, the best things require attention and take time. So when we give our attention to leveraging our influence and investing in others, teaching them how to live for something greater than themselves, then over time it will cause a culture shift for the next generation and make an eternal difference. Jesus Christ challenges us to be part of something that he calls the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. He urges us to understand its value and to forsake everything else to possess it to acknowledge that it is the only thing worth living for. Well, there are countless things that compete for our attention. Uh, I was reading a magazine that targets men and tries to tell us what we need to be healthier and happier, and I came across an ad that leaped off the two-page spread. Written above the hood of a shiny new silver Chevy Camaro was this, you could live without it, if you call that living. Hey, can you feel that? Man, I wanna test drive right now. But hold on to your horsepower and think about this. You could live without a transcendent cause, without really influencing others for eternity. You could keep your head down on the conveyor belt of conventional success and work hard and carve out a pretty good life. That's culturally acceptable. You could just live out your life that way, if you call that living.